Hey folks, it's Jim. Good morning, Jim. How are you? Very good. Hey, Robert. Hi, and Kirsten here from Red Hat. Hi, Kirsten. Hey. Hi, Kirsten. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Looks like we may not have much of a quorum today, huh? I suppose it's early. Right. Yeah, I didn't have too much to cover either. Just uh, I can give a few updates in terms of PRs and changes we've made on the policy reports. Um, seems reasonable. I know Jay is on vacation. She's on PTO okay. this week. She often joins. Um, so. but. All right, let's wait. We can give them a couple more minutes and then we'll just go through, I think at least what I can cover what I have. Um, Robert, are you it's set up or are you, can you maybe take the notes and update the doc for today? Sure. Right. Thank you. Right here. Hey folks, we're just waiting a couple of minutes to let more people join and we'll get started. Let's see, we have a couple more people. All right, uh, so I think we're at five minutes past, so should we get started? Uh, Robert, Erica, any? Yep, definitely. I don't think I ever got a response from the network policy people unless someone here is on the call, which I don't think I recognize most people. Uh, do we have other items on the agenda? So the only other item I, I mentioned uh, uh, towards the top of the hour that I could quickly cover is just some um, pull requests which uh, were merged in this last couple of weeks and so I'll just give a quick update on the policy report CR um, and then I think Kirsten said that Jaya is out this week so I, I don't think we have any updates from her or her team um, yeah so that's I think those were the only items on the agenda Oh, does anyone else have anything? Sorry, I missed the first five minutes. All right, we'll look maybe short meeting today. So go ahead, Jim. Okay. Um, all right, so in terms of the policy in a report and the custom resource definition, a few the small changes that were introduced uh, that I can quickly highlight. Um, one is in the in the policy report itself if you recall there was a scope selector 
And at one point this got dropped because we didn't have a good use case for it. But then as we have been implementing the report in various places, uh, one of the use cases that came up is if there's, um, you know, like if you're running an application from a Helm chart, uh, typically there's some standard labels like uh, application name, application instance. Um, those are recommended labels and the Helm automatically injects those. So one of the use cases was to use the selector to actually highlight that the policy report was for a workload run um, through a Helm chart, right? And that seemed like a pretty nice way of tying in or selecting a set of you know, resources that belong to a workload. So we brought back the, the scope selector. So that's this field, uh, which is now in the policy report. Um, so that, that's part of the CR. And another change that, uh, you know, somewhat related, but also in the policy report result instances, um, there we have a resource selector. So the idea is the report could, could um, you know, be built for a group of resources, but then each result may be specifically pointing to one resource within that group. Um, so the, uh, previously, what we had was just a resource with an object reference, but the feedback was if the same result, um, so like if the same violation applied to five different resources, there was a lot of duplication in terms of the, um, the, the type of data which we wanted to show in the policy result element, right? So like the rule details, the message, things like that. So to try and keep things more, more condensed, uh, what we did was we changed this resources field to be a list. So that way you could have one result element which has a list of resources, or you could also use a selector here if labels are applicable. Um, but in some cases, it seemed like these could be heterogeneous resources where labels may not apply. So just having a list provides a lot of flexibility and that way a particular result like for example, if there's a violation with like some, you know, let's say a pod uh, is running as root user, you could have a list of pods that in, in that namespace which violate that particular policy rule. So it just helps keeps the report more condensed and, and cleaner. Uh, so that's, that was another change that was introduced. So those were the two two main things. Uh, just looking at the list of issues, I haven't seen any updates. Uh, I know we discussed some of these with uh, Jaya last time, but uh, I think we need to uh, figure out what we do with the time fields. And then again, if we want to put more data in the policy status, like a reason or remediation and, and some more, um, uh, more information there. So, yeah, and then adding things like, again, category, severity, et cetera, so we can uh, quickly close those as we see examples. So those are the main updates from my side. Um, uh, also, like in terms of using the report in more places, uh, we need to decide uh, how we, you know, we had talked about uh, whether you know, picking something like Falco or also uh, potentially KubeBench, and then starting to look at transforming or uh, reporting the, the policy, creating the policy report from those tools. So I think um, those would be good to revisit and see how we can, you know, uh, start using the standard report structure there. And I don't know with Rackham, Erica, if you know if there's any updates or if from folks who have been using this uh, or any examples that we can highlight and include in the repo i'm not sure i have any maybe kirsten do you have any updates yeah. things? i i don't at the moment i know that um so i think without jaya here uh and and we don't have oz either so so it may be um that we'll need to wait for feedback there okay Yeah, uh, do we, so we should reach out to some people. Um, I don't know what a good like deadline for that would be or 
anything. My schedule's a little wonky these next few weeks, so I don't want to overly promise. Yeah, maybe, if, Erica, if you want to start like a thread on Slack, maybe that's the best way to communicate. I know Oz was on there. I haven't, I don't have the usernames for some of the other folks from the team, but uh, perhaps uh, we can just kick off some discussions on Slack and that way uh, get, uh, quicker feedback than waiting for the next call. That sounds good. And and I don't, do we want to, you know, ping uh, folks like Liz Rice from Aqua? I mean, I know they joined one of our mm -hmm. calls. Um, right. And then, uh, ba, 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 who else? Uh, it's, does Sistig ever join any of these calls? You're just, I'm wondering, because you mentioned Falco, that's all. I I know they we had some folks on the list. I know some of the folks who were on the list have transitioned and sure. into different right uh, roles and yeah. companies. So, well, so maybe that's like you say, Slack will hit whoever is really right. interested in paying attention. Or if you good. do email the, these people, they'll be able to tell you who's transitioned. Right. And they might have it tends to be informal, which is which is why this I think the Slack chat in this case will probably be a good a good one. One of these right, days, we'll, I have we'll to figure out Slack. how to get myself signed into the, the <laughs> right, group Slack. I haven't figured <laughs> out what is gating me. So yeah. Erica, maybe I'll ping you. Maybe you can help me. <laughs> so I can do my best. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, I think there's a, I don't remember the process. It's, it was a while ago that I signed up. I, I think it was fairly straightforward though, once you find the link to sign up on. Uh -huh. I found something in it and it was like, I had to add, anyway, I'll try again. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Christina, I'm not sure if I've seen you on our, some of our prior calls, but would love to. My first time. Oh, welcome. Um, who are you with and you know any particular interest in terms of topics etc that we can so help i'm discuss? just at the moment finding my feet around the ncf uh, okay i am with red hat okay um i i'm just generally interested around kubernetes and um it's it's progress towards um uh, security Awesome. Yes, yeah, so certainly a lot of work um, on discussions we've been having. So Erica um, and Kirsten are also from, you know, Red Hat or IBM, and so you guys probably know each other then. Or uh, I, I know Christina, yeah, and then okay. she and I have have worked with some. She she works pretty closely with some of our customers who okay, are very great. security focused. So. Um, She's coming from that angle. And I don't know what that Erica and Christina have met. So. I don't think we have. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Well, welcome. Uh, Thank you. It's always great to have more perspectives. I don't know if you're also interested. There's the CNCF SIG security chat later today as well. If that's something you're, you're interested in, you can check out. So it depends on. So, so it depends on how later, if it's an hour later, that's probably okay. If it's three to four, I'm UK time. So it is going to be quite difficult managing it it's with like everything else. Two hours, it looks like. Yeah. Um, if you want to send me a link to it uh, or I'll find it. Um, what's it called? SIG? SIG security. Yeah. yeah. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Yeah. And your our focus has been, so there's a couple of projects we've been working on the policy report, which I was just sharing some updates briefly on that's been one of the topics. Um, and then just generally in terms of how to rationalize across different policy engines and create some standard tools for uh, running reporting, et cetera, is what our, our main interest is. Oh, that's good. Knowing how, um, how everything works is half the battle, knowing, having reports feedback. 
Yeah, so at this point, you know, what we're most interested in is uh, getting more use cases, getting more traction on the policy report. And at that some point, we'll go back to a couple of the SIGs, uh, SIG auth and SIG security, and see how we can, you know, publish this uh, as a more standard resource that could, that can be adopted uh, widely. So um, if you think of any other use cases, any, any other teams that might be interested in creating and reporting in a standard manner, and could be runtime policies, could be admission controls, or any other, uh, I guess, um, incidents of interest or events in the cluster is what we're capturing here. Yeah, I've got, so I've got an idea, but I'm not entirely sure if this is relevant, right? Um, no, it's not. It's not relevant to Kubernetes. It's more re relevant to OpenShift. So I'll, I'll keep that one to myself because okay. of the um, OAuth um, server. So we'll keep that one. Sure. Or it might be that um, we can we can chat with Erica and see whether it's useful for the auth sig. So yeah, yeah. And I added a link to our GitHub repo so you can browse through there and see see some of the current activity. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. All right, so I think if there's nothing else, then we can probably wrap early today and you know let's start some uh, Kirsten if you if you if you have any issues on the slack side, feel free to reach out to me or Thanks. just email me. I think you have my email right we'll, uh -huh. sure. we can help get you set up and then let's get uh, some of the others from the team also on there so we can have some discussions in between meetings. Yep. Sounds good. Awesome. Great. Thanks everyone. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.